Hello dear friends, prime factorization, it can be little bit tricky when the numbers involved in the prime factors are large. If you have a number which is divisible by 2, then anyone can make the prime factors. Or for that matter, if the number is divisible by 3, 5, 7 or even 11, students can make factors very easily. But if the numbers involve prime factors which are greater than 11, then students feel difficulty in making the factors of such numbers. Like you have the number 1073. Now this number is not divisible by 2, not divisible by 3, not divisible by 5, neither by 7 nor by 11. So making the prime factors of 1073 is difficult. So what option do we have now? Students can make prime factors of such numbers also easily if they have basic understanding of the prime numbers and their product. All these numbers which I have written here are product of two primes and we need to find out which two prime numbers have to be multiplied in order to get the product of this number 1073, 943, 2279 such large numbers 2279 most of the students cannot factorize this within 15 to 20 seconds they will consume at least one minute or even more to factorize all these numbers. So I'll take the basic example of 143 and then we will try and increase the complexity and try to factorize larger numbers which are product of two large primes. So let's develop the understanding of how we can get to this number. Now see 143, the number is quite small and if you have to multiply two prime numbers then you cannot think of large primes like 31, 37. Why? Because their product with another large prime will be far more than 143. So you have to think of prime numbers which are not above say 20. If you see the unit digit here, that's the ones place. In the ones place, we have a 3. So if you want to have two prime factors whose product is 143, then either the two numbers have to end with 1 and 3 because 1 into 3 is 3. So the product of these two numbers may end with 3 and can give you a product 143. Or there is another possibility. You can have two numbers ending with 7 and 9. The numbers ending with 7 and 9, if you multiply them, the product will end with 3. 7 into 9 is 63. It ends with 3 and our number 143 is also ending with 3. So these are the two possibilities. And now if you have got to this step, then next step will certainly give you the correct answer. If you prefix 1 here, this will, be, will become 11 and 11 into 3 is smaller than 143. So if you prefix 1 here and 1 here, then both the numbers 11 and 13 are prime. And if you multiply them, your result will be very close to 130 because 13 into 10 is 130. So 13 into 11 is going to give you 143. So 143, the prime factors are quite obvious just by little bit of understanding. You don't need to test 7 and 9. Why? Because if you multiply 17 and 9, you can't do it because 9 is not prime. So you cannot take 9. So you have to prefix 9 by a number. And if you prefix 9 by 1, it becomes 19 and this becomes 7, then 19 into 7 is not 143. So if you prefix this also by 1, then it becomes much, much larger than 143. 
So your obvious answer for this question is 11 into 13. So even if you have understood 20% of this, it's fine because we are going to solve 5 more problems based on this method of factorizing a large number which is product of 2 primes. So 391. Now see the number is ending with 1. So what are the options? You may have two numbers. See the product is 1. So both the numbers can end with 1 because 1 into 1 is 1. Or you may have two numbers, 1 ending with 3 and 1 ending with 7 because 3 into 7 is 21 which again ends with 1. So these are the two possibilities. Now let's look into it. See if I write 1 here, 11 into 1 is very less than 391 and 1 is not prime. So you have to prefix a number in both these. So if you make this 11 and 11, 11 to 11 is 121 which is again less than 391. So you have to get on with this increasing it. If you prefix 2 then 21 is not prime. So you cannot prefix 2. You can prefix 3. Why? Because 31 is a prime number and 11 is also a prime number. But 31 into 11 is not 391. So if I go beyond this then this will be greater than 391. So there are very few possibilities that our answer will end with 1 each. So what are options we have now? We have 3 and 7. Now let's try with 3 and 7. If you prefix 1 here 13 into 7 is not 391. If you prefix 1 here 13 and 7 both are prime but 17 into 10 is 170 so this is not going to give me 390. So I need to increase it. So suppose I increase this by 2. Now it gives me 23 which is prime but 27 is not prime. So I have prefixed 2 here. So 23 into 17 just try this out. 23 into 17 is going to give you 391 which is the prime factorization of 391. Let's see 527. Now again the unit digit is 7. So what options we have? So either the number will end with 1 and 7 because 1 into 7 is 7 or the number will end with 3 and 9 because 3 into 9 is 27 which ends with 7. So let's try 1 and 7 first. See I will straightforward move to 20s and 30s. Why? Because 10s, 11, 17 they are not going to give me 527. Let's try with 20s. If I take 2 here, this is 21 which is not prime, so I cannot have 21. If I take 2 here, this is 27, 27 is also not prime, so I cannot go with 2's in both the numbers. So I will have to either stay in 10's or go in 3's. Now if I move in 10's, 11 into 7, 11 into 17, these are not 527, it is a large number. So Let's have some other number. 11 is not going to give me 527. So let's have 17 here and try it with 11, 17 into 11, again 187. So very less. 21 I cannot take. So let's take 31. Just try 31 and 17. 31 into 17, you can use the basic method or you can do directly. 17 into 1 is 17. 17 is a 51 plus 1. 52 so 527 exact factorization of 527 17 into 31 so you don't need to consider 9 and 3's students the method might be a little bit difficult for you but little bit of practice and I'm sure you are going to factorize numbers in thousands like this are uh, very very easily um, in a matter of just 10 to 15 seconds so just consider 1073 see we have a 3 here so our number is going to end with 1 or 3 and the other option is 7 and 9. So there are two, only two possible options. We cannot have even numbers here. We have to end with 1, 3, 7 and 9 only. Now 1, 0, 7, 3 is quite a large number. So I need to think of 20s and 30s, 40s like this. So let's go with 
one here, eleven into a two-digit number is not going to give me a number in thousands. So let's go with two. Twenty-one is not prime, so I cannot have twenty-one here. I can have a twenty-three here and eleven. Not one zero seven three twenty-one. No, thirty-one. Thirty-one into twenty-three. Thirty into twenty-six hundred. So that is quite less than this. So no, uh, no option. Here you can have forty-one. Forty into twenty is eight hundred. Again, quite less. No. So go with fifty-one. So let's see fifty-one and twenty-three. Twenty-three into two, one is twenty-three. So two carry. Twenty-three into five is one one five one one eight. So that is quite large. So this option nearly stands cancelled. Now think of this: single digit into a double digit is not going to give me thousands. Okay, I can have a seventeen and a nineteen. Twenty to twenty is four hundred. So this is going to be less than four hundred. No, not an option. I can have a twenty-nine here. Twenty-nine into seventeen, thirty into seventeen is five ten. Again less. So we can have a three here. Thirty-seven. Now test with thirty-seven and twenty-nine. Thirty-seven, twenty-nine, twenty-nine. So seven nine is sixty-three. So six carry. Twenty-seven and fourteen is forty-one. Plus six is forty-seven. See four carry. Six plus four ten. So one zero seven three. Same number. So here we have the prime factorization of one zero seven three. As thirty-seven into twenty-nine, nine forty-three. Again, one and three. See again, we can uh, uh, make use of eleven into see twenty-three. No, forty-three into eleven again very much less. Fifty-three into eleven, five eighty-three. No, sixty-three is not prime. Seventy-three into eleven again less. Eighty-three into eleven, so eighty-three into eleven, eleven zero thirty-three, three eleven is eighty-eight ninety-one. So that's quite close, but it is not giving me the correct answer. So I cannot increase this. So let's increase this one now. Okay, I'll have eleven uh, is not going to give twenty-one is not prime thirty-one, and uh, suppose I have uh, here twenty-three. This is six hundred. No, so let's increase this. Forty-one and twenty-three, so forty-one and twenty-three, three ones are three, so this is twelve plus two fourteen, four one, so eight and one nine nine forty-three. That's the great uh, method which has given us the correct factorization of this also. Finally, we have doubled to seven nine, so either the number is going to end with three and three, and uh, the other option can be one and nine. So you can try with this, and you can get to the answer. This is more than two thousand, so our number has to be in forties, fifties, because fourteen to fifty is two thousand. So if you try with four, we have five here, forty-three into fifty-three. Just try it; your answer will be double to seven nine. So this is this involves quite a bit of hit and trial, but I am sure this is going to help you out because there is no other method of testing divisibility by large primes like forty-three, fifty-three. You cannot have divisibility rules for all large prime numbers. So, if the number is a product of two large primes, then this method is going to help you in competitive exams. So, friends, if you like this video, do share it with all those who are preparing for competitions and who struggle in prime factorization involving large primes. And if you have not done till now, do subscribe the channel for more videos to come.